So I was having a discussion uh, a few days ago with a uh, with buddy from the Gadget Reboot channel. And he mentioned that he, he, he really ought to get himself some more different Arduino boards. And I, I guess I was a bad influence and he's off spending his money. Anyway, it got me to thinking, there's actually a lot of different Arduino boards. And I have a pretty good assortment of them around here. So I might as well just show what some of the different ones are. There's, there's a lot of overlap in them. This is the, the classic Uno. Actually, it's the Uno R3. Um, this is another version of it. This guy's got the surface mount chip. This one's got the uh, full-size dip. Functionally, they're exactly the same. Um, but I've, uh, I've got a demo sketch that I've thrown together, basically copy and pasting stuff from a couple of different sketches into one demo sketches. Um, there's nothing original in there. Um, I just wanted to kind of show that you can run the same code on multiple different boards with no modifications whatsoever. So this one, like I said, is the, is the Uno which is kind of the classic. It's sort of the default. If you get a starter kit, it's going to come with one of these. Matter of fact, that's where this one came from, is a starter kit that I got a few years ago. I'm I'm not any kind of an expert on these things. I've only been tinkering with them for a year and a half, two years kind of thing. I don't know, go back on my channel. You can see where I first started playing with them. Um, but I'm just going to share some of the stuff that I've learned along the way and show you some of the boards like i said most of them are very similar in function the majority of them even have the same chip on them the atmel 80 mega 328p so here's my little test sketch or demo sketch um this is just this little breadboard just being used as a power breakout to everything uh, so i can switch between boards easily i've already loaded my little sketch into here so power on so what I'm doing, um, I'm running the Fast LED library, a demo that I found for it. Fast LED is a library for these series or serial controlled LEDs. These particular ones are WS2812, aka NeoPixel. Uh, and I've just got a bunch of little eight pin or eight, uh, LED modules chained together and now that one's lost that one's lost track let me just reset the uh, thing here there we go so these are just sending power 5 volts uh, ground 0 volts and data this one here into them and they just uh, shuffle it down the line each one gets its own instructions um, so you'll see occasionally some of them are different color than others as it goes to different parts of the sketch. Um, at the same time, this servo was doing its thing and the clunky way I've done this sketch, it just, the servo does its thing for once, then it lets the loop go back to this thing. It's really ugly, but there you go. You can see what's happening. So anyway, that is in the Uno. Now the Uno, uh, Again, I'm going to throw a chart up here when I'm editing it, and you can find it online. But uh, I'm just going to quickly look at my notes here. So the Uno, its features, again, it's sort of the, the base standard model. It's got 32K of memory, uh, and a little bit of that's taken up by the bootloader, but not much. Uh, it has, let's get this one in closer here so you can see it. So it has uh, 14 digital pins labeled D0 to D13. It has six analog input pins uh, labeled A0 to A5. The, the 328 chip actually has more than that, but that's all that's broken out here. Then there's power and ground and some other stuff, some serial communication. Um, how many of these? Uh, I think half a dozen of these digital pins can be used for PWM, so you can use them for dimming or speed control and stuff like that. Um, several of them have multiple functions that you can use one at a time, but that's the standard. So all those are going to be available on any Uno. 
Similarly, the Arduino Nano also has the same chip, the 18 mega 328. You can also get them with a, a lower capacity chip, not older, like I said in another video previously, but just a lower capacity chip, the 18 mega 168. Um, it's a little bit slower. It's got less memory, but it's got the same pins. And in this case, there are actually eight analog pins broken out and then the same 13 digital pins and the same digital pins can double up as uh, PWM. And I have the same sketch loaded into this one as I do into this one. So let me just quickly change the wiring around here. Okay, did I do that right? Let's find out. Power on. There we go. So running the same code, the, the differences really are, it's a physically smaller board and it's got a couple more analog inputs, but it can do exactly the same job. There's, why would you choose between one and the other one? This thing's a little bit easier if you're prototyping to poke, uh, poke wires in and out of. This guy is smaller, fits in a smaller uh, box. If you're prototyping, you can get different shields that will just stack right on top of the Unos. You can also get different shields for the, uh, you know, that one's a motor driver shield that can stack on top of the Uno. You can also get shields and breakouts for the, uh, for the Nanos as well. These are a couple of different ones that I've got. That one just breaks out the screw terminals. This one actually breaks it out and you can put stepper drivers on those positions there. And, uh, it's actually, that one is designed to run a, is it a 3d printer, I think a homemade 3d printer, not what I'm using it for. But anyway, that's, that's some of the variety. Uh, let's pull in a different one. This board is the Arduino mega 58 or what is it? 25 mega 2560. It has 54 digital pins, 15 of them with PWM on it and 16 analog pins. So obviously it's bigger than a, an Uno. However, you notice these four sets of pins are in exactly the same shape. So it can also take Uno shaped shields on that first part and still leaves these other pins available to play with. Other things, it's got like 256K of memory available to it. Uh, and 8K that's used by the bootloader. It runs at 16 megahertz. And the chip that it runs at is actually the AT Mega 2560 uh, from Atmel. So that's why it's called that. But as you can see, it does exactly the same thing with that same sketch loaded into it. So you can run exactly the same code with zero modifications. Ain't that cool. What else we got here? If you want to go even smaller than the nano, then there's this guy, the pro mini. It again has the same chip on it, or you can get it again with the 168 chip for less memory and less money. Oh, look with the same code, it does exactly the same thing. So the other difference, other than it being smaller, is that this guy doesn't have its own USB support on board. The, all the rest of these guys do. This one doesn't, which is where the size and the cost savings comes in. So to program it, you need an external USB to serial adapter, which just plugs onto the pins on the end there with cheap, cheap DuPont connectors. And you just plug it into the uh, computer, into the IDE, exactly the same as any of the other ones. Upload your code, bang, done. And that's actually what I had running the sign for a couple of years. You may remember seeing it uh, sitting on a breadboard in the back there with one of these semi-permanently attached to it just because I was changing the code every week. But once you've got uh, your code all set up, why not bang it onto a little guy? A uh, little guy like him. The other thing that it, where's my note here? It's got a few less pins on it. It's only got, most of them only have three 
analog pins broken out. Some of them do have, let me see if I can find one. Yes, yeah, some of them do have extra analog pins broken out. There's four, five, six, and seven at the end there. And again, it's got digital pins from zero to 13, so 14 digital pins. Now then, if you want to go even smaller, there's the DigiSpark, which is based on the ATtiny85 chip, which is an 8-pin chip, you can see there. Being an 8-pin chip, and needing, obviously, power and ground, means there's only 6 pins for you to play with. But that's okay. You can, uh, you can still do that. But it's also got a lot less memory than the other big guys. So I can't run the entire sketch that I had running for these other things. I can either do one or the other, not both. Basically because they're both pulling in libraries that are fairly sizable. Um, if I wasn't using bigger libraries, I could probably put a little bit more code onto this thing. But it runs that NeoPixel, um, I mean fast LED sketch just fine. It's a little bit slower. Uh, I think it's running at 8 meg. Where is it here in my notes? Yeah, it's running at 8 meg. It's only got 8k of uh, memory, 6k which is usable once the bootloader takes up space. But for something really tiny and low uh, that doesn't need a lot of brain power like that, you can get away with something like that. That's actually what's inside here. It's a slightly different form factor. It's got a different USB shape of USB connector on it, but that's what's inside there driving that guy right now. So there's a few other boards in my accumulation that I'm not going to power up right now, mostly because I haven't spent the time woodshedding and figuring them out exactly. Um, there's this 3-volt uh, Pro Mini that I got the in the last mailbag that runs on the 168 chip and runs at three volts. Bit of research that I have done uh, tells me that the reason it's running at three volts, it's it could run at five volts, but it is running at three volts and it's running at a slower clock speed. It should be able to tolerate five volts. I'm not gonna go there. Uh, I wanna do a bit more research. These lily pads. They have that same 80 mega 328 chip as all these other guys, well, most of these other guys have. I guess I should bring him back in because he's part of the 328 clan. Um, I'm, I haven't been able to get my serial programming working on it yet. I just haven't spent enough time on it. Uh, I'm sure there's all kinds of web resources available. I just haven't spent the time on it couple others that I've got here are, uh, they're sort of in the Arduino Leonardo family. They're actually called Pro Micros. Um, this is the standard one that you'll find if you search for it on the Arduino website. It's actually, both of these are running on the Atmel 32U4 chip, which has a little bit more memory and a few less pins. It's only got what, four analog pins and Oh, 15 digital pins, so very similar. But what it's, it's a trick, it's claim to fame, is that it can do USB natively. So you can just plug that guy straight in and program it. Now, I haven't bothered to solder pins onto it and get it running on here, but I used uh, the twin to this one in the Nintendo modification that I made several months back, uh, if you want to look back just because it can plug in to USB and it can emulate a keyboard or a mouse or a joystick device or any any number of other things. In that case, I was using it to emulate a keyboard. But, uh, yeah, and this is the same thing exactly in a slightly different form factor, in pretty much the same form factor as the DigiSpark, except it doesn't have quite as many pins broken out uh, what has it got here? Analog 0, 1, and 2. And digital 0, 1, 2, 3, 6, 9, 10. What's over here? 
16, 15, and 4. So that's quite a number, actually. That could be very useful. And it's tiny. And the other ones that I know some of you are saying, what about the ESP266? Yeah, I got some of those here too. I've got a bare ESP12. And I've got this Wemos D1 board, which is in a very familiar form factor. Um, the Arduino IDE can talk to this thing. There are some differences, and I haven't put in the hours to figure them out. Um, I know it lights up, it blinks, the uh, ESP module starts doing its Wi-Fi stuff that it's factory programmed for. And this one is called a Node MCU, but it is essentially the same thing with all the pins broken out. Now these guys don't have quite as many pins. They've only got one analog pin, for instance. And what do you got? Nine digital pins on the side of it? What's this guy got? Uh, D0 to D9, yeah. So 10 digital pins. So they're not quite as versatile if you need lots of pins, but their big trick is they can do Wi-Fi. And they're not much more expensive than an Uno. But if you don't need Wi-Fi, why would you embed it into your project? And I, I tend to use the smallest and least expensive one and least complicated one that I can for a given project. Other people have different parameters. That's, that's up to them. I do have one other module that, or one other processor module, but I haven't figured it out. And again, I, I think I bought it actually by accident. It's an STM32 board, but this isn't the one that is commonly supported or easily supported by the Arduino IDE. And again, if you've been watching the channel, I've said this over and over again. I'm not a software guy. I'm not a code guy. I'm a hardware guy. I like playing with hardware. Um, the, the software is sort of a, a necessary evil from my point of view. So I may get around to it eventually. Some of you code monkeys down in the comments are going to be screaming, it's so simple, just do blah, blah, blah. Fine, cool. It's simple for you. I'm not a software guy. So that's, that's all about all I got to say about this. Um, if you've got anything to say in the comments, I'm sure I made some mistakes in here. Um, if you've played with these uh, these lily pad boards and you've got a good resource to point me at, I'm I'm all ears on that. Um, if you've got any questions that I didn't answer or if I created more questions than answers, um, feel free to ask. I may not have the answers, but somebody might. Uh, I don't know. That's, yeah. That's it for tonight. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you later.